Welcome, cosmic listeners, to a journey unlike any other you've embarked upon. As the vastness of space stretches out before us, so too does the vastness of our own minds. This is where the ethereal meets the extraterrestrial, where inner space meets outer space. I'm your guide, alongside my hosts, Doro and Matt, and you're tuning into the intersection of meditation and mysteries beyond our stars. Picture this, a vast universe, ever-expanding, filled with stars, galaxies, and possibilities. Now visualize our own minds equally deep, intricate, and filled with untapped potential. What if these two worlds aren't as separate as they seem? All right, well, that was an intro uh, that our AI co-producer helped write chat GPT um, this is Matt ready thank you for uh, tuning in to this uh, I'm here with uh, my good friend Doro and this is meditation and alien I am the co-host of a um, of another podcast called beyond humanity that I've been recording with uh, Margaret Howe for the uh, last several weeks and we delve deeply into the topics of, of uh, alien disclosure that's been sweeping through Congress all this summer and the topics of, uh, of many topics related to it. So I'm very excited today to have Doro here with me to start a new uh, conversation that is exploring the overlap between the world of meditation, which uh, Doro has a lot of knowledge and experience about, and the whole topic of uh, alien life and life in this universe and everything in between. Um, so yeah, uh, with that, uh, hi Doro, thank you for being here. Hey Matt, thanks for having me. Um, did you want me to go ahead and, and say a little bit about myself or? Yeah, okay. please, please tell people about yourself and then uh, I believe you're gonna guide us through a, a, a meditation. So, yes, yeah. I'll uh, I'll tell you a little bit about me, and then I'll do a, a ten or fifteen minute guided meditation. Great. Um, so I have been I'm I'm seventy years old. I've been uh, meditating for decades, and um, in the nineties, I was certified as a life coach, so I can help people bring meditative and mindfulness practices into their life, um, so they can more easily manage the transitions that they are facing in their life um, or even just uh, going into the deep dives of discovery of of who they are and what it's all about uh, so my business is creationcoach.com i have lots of little videos on youtube uh, and shorts that i'm enjoying making thanks to you matt i've learned how to do this uh, ai art and creating avatars. It's been a real journey. So thanks for that. Um, and there's more to come. I can see you're very much into all this uh, technology. So it's, <laughs> yeah. it's, it's a very interesting mix. Uh, so yeah, the, um, the bridge between meditation and aliens is an interesting one. Because I have found over these decades, that um, that as I meditate, I'm, I'm finding it, it's a little bit shifting here and there, and I'm getting insights. Now, that's not an unusual thing because anybody can tell you there's even a special meditation called insight meditation, which is just uh, sort of clearing the mind as best you can. There's always going to be chatter going on in the background, um, more or less, but you calm your mind enough and then sometimes, and not always, but on occasion, you will suddenly have an insight. It's like you suddenly know something and it comes up like a memory. It feels as though you've been smelling something and suddenly a memory pops in. It's that odor it reminds you of something. So it's kind of like that. It's just a, an insight that pops in and it feels like a memory. Um, and what's happening for me lately and and has been happening probably most of my life 
is that I can actually get these insights from what I feel is a much higher consciousness, uh, much higher, and nothing that I'm seeing even on this earth, but something that can really um, teach us deep lessons about life and give us insights. And not, not that it's a conversation per se, there's not really words going back and forth. It's just a deep understanding. And um, it's kind of hard to, 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 to uh, describe it unless you experience it. So what I'd like to do is just uh, provide a short uh, 10 or 15 minute guided meditation just to get your audience into that deep, calm, receptive space without trying to figure things out or analyze it or judge stuff. This would just be calming, clearing the mind, creating an open, um, an open field. It feels like just an open spaciousness. So, uh, so when whenever you want to start, I can uh, jump in with that. Unless you want to know a little bit about my my background, which is uh, uh, a whole other story. But we could just. <laughs> we could just... I think let's meditate first, and then yes. let's see where the. That sounds good. Um, Great. Okay, so right now we're gonna we're gonna try to just get ourselves comfortable, and obviously, if you're driving a car, <laughs> you you uh, want to keep your eyes open uh, for for now. Um, but everybody else, let's just try and get comfortable and see if we can uh, come into a space of just being okay with where we are right this minute. Um, I'm going to ring a bell and I'll invite your audience to pay attention to it from the beginning to the end and see if you can hear the wobble of the vibration on your eardrum and, uh, and just sense that, what it's doing to your nervous system. So really just explore the sound, the vibration, the harmonics, and we'll do that for just a minute. So we'll go ahead and start now. So now, with our eyes closed, let's go ahead and start with a couple of deep breaths. And what we're going to do now is watch how our body expands and contracts with each breath. So we'll just do this for a couple of nice deep breaths. Breathing in. Breathing out. Breathing in, breathing out. So what we're going to do is we're going to just be the witness to what's actually happening. Not what we think is happening, but we're going to move into that space of just observing what is. So if you're seated, seated, I should say, try to feel your butt on the cushion or the chair, just the weight of your body pressing down. You can feel your feet on the floor. Begin to feel anything else that's coming up into your awareness, maybe the feeling of your clothing on your skin, sounds coming through your ears, might be a motor running or cars driving by. So as we're taking in all this information of what 
is actually happening. We are slowly allowing the inner chatter to kind of move away a little bit so it's not taking over our mental space. And a lot of times when the mind is extremely active, it helps to have what we call an anchor. And that can be any mantra, it can be any word, something hopefully that holds a nice vibration. But for now we can, if we need to use the anchor, just breathing in, breathing out, just to stay present. So I'm going to be quiet for a minute and I'm going to encourage everybody to just go through the senses, the touch, sight. You can open your eyes and see shades, colors, shapes, depth, movement. We're not, uh, we're trying not to label everything. So for now, we're just going to use this for a minute to get present. So I'm going to be quiet and let everybody discover their own space. If your mind wanders, which it probably will, the point is to recognize it. Not to judge it, just to recognize that this is the nature of the mind. And then choose to bring it back into your body, into your senses. Breathing in, breathing out. See if you can notice that sense of life in your hands. The hands are always slightly buzzing with this feeling of life. Notice how your body always tries to maintain posture, muscles contracting and releasing. So as we're moving into this receptive, curious place, looking to just discover what is, we can hold an invitation, an invitation for any insights coming from a much higher realm. And we don't have to anticipate it. We don't have to wish for it. We just have to be receptive and open.
Any insights coming to you might not be in the form of words at all, but rather a feeling. Suddenly your heart feels touched. You might just sense a, like a warm blanket wrapped around you. We're being invited to connect with a much higher potential. And again, if your mind gets carried away in thinking, just notice that. No judgment. It's just what the mind does. The noticing of it is the most important part because that gives us the um, choice to come back, to let go of it and come back to our body. So we're not, we're not going out into, into space anywhere. We're just right here in this space with our feet on the floor, our butt on the cushion. We're not trying to go anywhere. We're right here. In a state of receptivity. We want to make our intention clear that we are seeking higher energies, more evolved wisdom. We want to create sort of a channel, a communication pathway for love. We want to be pretty intentional about that. just to open our hearts. I can sense this divine intelligence who recognizes something is wrong with our world. And Stephen Greer would say um, that we have to show them where we are because they're tuning into us in a psychic way, but don't see us on the map. So he advises to actually show them our Milky Way galaxy, show them where our planet is, and just create that address. Here's where we are. And just ask for their guidance.
And we're not talking out of fear, out of anxiety. We're talking from a place that we know we can do better. We know there is a more beautiful world that we could create. We just need some guidance. Breathing in, breathing out. And so now we'll just slowly open our eyes and come back to the show. Let me ring the bell just to bring us out of that. So yes, I do feel that there is a much higher interest, much greater intelligence, um, consciousness that wants to help, but um, we have to invite them and we have to let them know where we are. Hmm. Thank you very much for that. That was, uh, that was uh, silly like putting a judgment on a medita guided meditation but that was <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's really a natural state of being you know meditation is not some big woo woo thing it's just what we always did before you know television and all the entertainment and mm -hmm. i mean a lot of people would just sit and and whittle all day or knit crochet mm -hmm. and that was a meditation it was just mm -hmm. being Yeah. Several, several uh, possible questions I have for you. <laughs> right. Yeah. Good. Mm. It was interesting. Uh, you mentioned Stephen Greer because we've uh, been talking, uh, uh, you and I, about some of his guided meditations. In particular, there's one version of his CE5 meditation that I um, I've been, li I've listened to like 10 times and, uh, I, I think you've listened to it at least a couple times. Mm -hmm. Um, um, as you mentioned the, uh, well, that we're basically, uh, it's almost like a telepathic connection with a diff other consciousness, other beings. Um, and he talks about the same thing and, uh, yeah, I was kind of curious, could you like, while you were guiding a meditation, I mean, could you like relay to us during the guided meditation, things you're uh, hearing or feeling communicated? Yeah, you know, that's, <clears throat> I think that's my next step is because I do hear it. And it's, it's more like a translation. It comes through in sort of a compact energy bunch and it, and it is filtered into words, my, my language. So, you know, this comes through in any language uh, and it's, it's your vocabulary that gives it words. The understanding is offered and then you put words around it. So, yes, I get, <clears throat> I get, um, these insights or, or feelings that, that are being communicated. And I tend to decipher them in my own head. I have not done much in the way of actual channeling because I think that's what you're referring to. Um, but that's that would be the next step. Mm -hmm. um, I've always had one foot off the boat when it comes to channeling. I've, I've, I've never really felt like you could uh, trust everybody who's channeling. <laughs> so 
Um, but I do think there are very much authentic channelers. And I think if I could uh, do it, I would probably be as authentic as, as I can be. So, um, so what is channeling? Um, channeling is actually being the mouth for somebody speaking or just not speaking through you, but giving you those condensed energy packets of information. And then you transcribe it and, and speak it. Um, you, you hear it, you sense it, you feel it, and you speak it. But you are not really uh, offering your agenda, your own opinions. Um, it's just coming through you. Hmm. I used to um, do a lot of uh, what they call writing you know the um i guess it's channeled writing like while to... you're meditating or after you meditate no not it's sort of before and after when my mind mind is quiet um but not obviously sitting with my eyes closed i i would be in a quiet space and i used to like to do it early in the morning with a little candle uh at the breakfast table with my notebook and just write um a few pages and sometimes that felt like channeling uh quite a bit actually just so what my thoughts. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. so um i'm just kind of curious i haven't really like delved into this with you but what is it that uh inspired you to begin sitting in you know or really learning about meditation or really practicing it where did that come from and and how give us an idea how long have you been practicing it well, it's interesting because, gosh, when I was uh, 13, my father taught me how to meditate. My parents were very interesting. Um, they were both very much on a spiritual path. They were breakaways from the Catholic Church and went into their own uh, paths before they met. And so when they did meet in their teens and early 20s, they uh, really connected on a spiritual level. And so my father, and this is interesting, I always knew he was uh, deeply spiritual and philosophical, but my brother uh, just recently told me that he was actually a Rosicrucian, and I had to jump down that hole and go find out what that was. So mm -hmm. that gets into all the mystery teachings. Anyway, that's, mm -hmm. the, that's the lineage I'm coming from, is m both of my parents were, were very much deeply into um, spirituality. My mother was a an astrologer and um, she uh, she always hung out with psychics and you know friends like that so it was an unusual upbringing back in the 60s and 70s so that I got an early start on meditation um, we went to my mother sent us to the Edgar Casey camp in Virginia which has the um, they call the ARE camp Association for Research and Enlightenment, just to learn meditation and yoga and all that. Uh, hmm. So it goes way back, you know, like I said, I'm, I'm almost 70, I'll be 70 in a few months. Um, so it's been a long time meditating, I've had a lot of experiences and, and uh, retreats. Um, I go to a Buddhist monastery retreat uh, here in West Virginia. Um, so yeah, a long history with meditation. Hmm. That's interesting. And so when you were first taught meditation, it was from your dad. So and so what style were you taught at first? And how like, what techniques have you like delved into over the years? Or or is it is it stayed very consistent? Well, it's consistent for me, uh, because I keep coming back to the simple practice of Vipassana, which is just the understanding that we are in the present moment and tuning in to what that means. Um, that's always been my, my go-to meditation. Now, that, of course, there's thousands of meditations. There's visualizations and, and um, hollow sync meditations. There's uh, meditations on specific things and mantra meditations. So there's a lot of that. Um, but yeah, I, I tend to always come back to the basics, <laughs> which is just follow your breath, because it's 
it's always with you as long as you're breathing it's there um it's reliable and when your mind is scattered and uh you're about ready to pull your hair out and jump off a cliff you can always just sit down and come back to your breath it's like your best friend it's always hmm. going to be there yeah yeah something um i've never been able to really stay with the breath uh i mean um but one thing that has like struck me lately as i've maybe been really trying to uh uh reestablish sort of like a nice meditation routine in my life um because it's very beneficial but uh, one thing I've, I've really realized about the breath is it's a constant transaction with the universe it's a constant because you know sometimes people say visualize you're breathing in the good breathing out the bad but it's like it kind of was funny when i realized you are breathing in uh stuff your body is exchanging it vital stuff you need and hopefully healthy stuff and you're then you are literally taking in stuff and giving out stuff in that breath. And just like drinking or, you know, it's like, um, I don't know, it was just sort of a, it was a weird revelation for me that instead of trying to imagine breathing in the good and out the bad, I was just like, why not just pay attention to what's actually happening? Feel what you're breathing in and feel what you're breathing out. I love that. You know, the other thing I'm playing with these days is um, the fact that what we carry around is not really human. You know, I mean, 10% of it is human. So we are about 72% water. Mm. And all of the DNA in our body, the majority of it is bacteria, um, viruses, you know, <laughs> our whole gut biome is, you know, ma the major is where the majority of our of the DNA that we carry around is in our gut, and it's not even human. <laughs> um, so you have to ask yourself, what am I? If I'm only if I'm only carrying around 10% DNA, and I'm 72% water. Yeah, and you're right, everything around us we, we take it in and we release it it's it's the the water is coming and going the air is coming and going the the food that we eat is coming and going so mm -hmm. um it's a good question to ask you know what what am i <laughs> <laughs> i think we're a lot more than just this body yeah I know, I know it yeah yeah and then um and, and do you mainly practice being still for meditation or do you explore different types of movement uh well these days yes it's just been sitting meditation um my formal practice i also do a walking meditation when i go for my hikes i really try to take in the surroundings you know i i enjoy walking in the country so i'm really looking at the trees and the you know hearing the gravel under my feet or whatever but even if you're in the city you know, you can make that a beautiful meditation, listening to car horns and people screaming. I mean, that's life, you know, so you can be present and, and loving in any um, environment. Uh, it, it takes a lot to be in a very obnoxious environment and feel loving, but it's a it's a practice. It's a never ending practice, something to work towards. Yeah. But, you know, I think um, I used to do yoga, so that was a, a deep meditation for me. Movement um, meditations are very, very uh, powerful. Um, Qigong, Tai Chi, certain forms of sacred dance. Um, these are all forms of meditation. Yeah. Have you tried any of those? Well, I've done the Qigong, I've done the Tai Chi, I've done the yoga. Um, yes, I've done all that. I have not done the sacred dancing, but, uh, I would love to, I've, I'm dealing with some, um, you know, at 70, I've got some limitations on my shoulder range of motion, but, uh, mm -hmm. yeah, I would, I would, I'm going, I would love to do all of that. It's all valid. It's all based in being present and mindful of what is. Yeah. Yeah, it definitely. I've been I've grown incredibly curious about uh, 
Yeah, this whole alien disclosure thing that's been happening the last several years and really that took off this summer is completely changed my attitude towards meditation and pushed me to try to understand it more deeply and really try to look and see if there's anything happening that I just completely have never really noticed. Um, so it really makes me sort of, it's made me like go back to really practice some time being still. I've sort of cheated, I think, a little bit on entertaining myself over the years and letting myself move uh, when I'm practicing meditation, even if I'm just moving slowly. But there's you definitely, you're taking away some of your attention when you're moving versus just being still for, you know, 30 minutes at a time. I, I, for me, it goes deeper, but you know, I, I think there are probably Qigong masters out there who, who, who don't, don't have to sit still to get there. Um, yeah. I just think I, I realized, you know, um, there's stuff to learn being still. There's just stuff to, just stuff to learn. <laughs> absolutely. The, the beautiful thing about being still for me is sometimes you, you just feel <laughs> this is torture, right? So I'm not going to advise this, but sometimes you have an itch or an ache, you know, and just trying to watch it without doing anything about it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You know, that that can really be a practice unto itself. Um, so it, it can kind of force you to go deeper. Yeah. So, and one thing I wanted to ask you about um, really came up in the Stephen Greer guided meditation because he takes, he, he sort of invites you to visualize going up into space, seeing the earth and the sun and the planets. And he suggests that uh, the sun and the earth are alive and conscious. And um, I found that incredibly interesting. And, and I, I guess I also found myself way more literally open-minded to that possibility than ever before in my life because um so 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 uncertain of the nature of every aspect of our reality suddenly what do you think of that concept of the earth and the sun being conscious and when you're meditating do you feel like you can feel their consciousness if you do that is such a beautiful practice and uh, this is brand new to me too i mean we all grew up believing that everything about outside of us was, you know, the, the earth was not conscious, the sun was not, but the more I go into my own meditation and connecting with these higher teachings, um, I'm learning that everything is conscious. And we are just in the middle of a big ocean of consciousness. And I'm talking, even the air around us is conscious. So what separates the air around us from me or you is just that we are, and this goes into quantum physics and all kinds of other theories about the Taurus uh, shape and everything, but we are at an intersection. Each human being is at an intersection of time and space, which, which, which gels into this energy form that we are embodying. <laughs> so that might be a little far out for some people, but, um, <laughs> but everything around us is conscious, everything, everything, uh, every, every leaf, every blade of grass, the sun, the moon, the stars, the galaxies, the, the air we breathe, it's all conscious. So what we want to do, and it's all there, there's, there's nothing inherently good or evil. But if we want to have happiness, we want to intentionally focus our gaze toward goodness, because that's what we'll, we will create. That's what we will um, surround ourselves with if we, if we maintain that open, spacious, higher consciousness intention. Um, it, just, it just makes for a better life. Because if you end up opening the lower portals, uh, you know, you can go into a hell that is so deep, you know, you just don't want to even think about going there. But it's there. And it's not something to be afraid of. It's just the other side of the coin. Hmm. Um, we can't have one without the other. So while I believe that there is the, the lightest of the light and the darkest of the dark, I do believe it's 
healthier for most people to sort of have the intention of aiming a little bit towards the light. But a lot of times I'll just say whatever's balanced, whatever feels completely balanced in any given moment is where I want to be. Hmm. But I, I think everything is conscious. Yeah. So I'm so glad we're recording this because I'm going to go back and listen to the whole thing again. Um, so, because there's several, several different ideas you sort of uh, brought me down, but I want to come back to the sun and the earth just mm -hmm. to, um, I found it, so do you um, feel, like you said the air is conscious, everything's conscious, but are some things, like humans seem to be um, a unique type of consciousness because we're agents in this world, we affect it, we, we have seemingly almost so much a capacity for good and evil for destructive and creative and and i guess because you and i live in this human world we have a you know i have like a an interest in trying to help this world be a more utopian wonderful place um while also just accepting it is what it is and trying not to be you know bugged by that but yeah. um but i'm I'm trying to figure out if, if say aliens are real in some way, is there a consciousness? Are there, are there really powerful alien consciousness in our say solar system? And if so, where are they? And, and I guess like what, I guess one of my practices during meditation, I've been paying way more attention to trying to figure out if I feel consciousness or something in a certain direction to so actually see if I can just sense what direction um if there is say really powerful aliens or anything in our world that's just unseen that we haven't been seeing and so i've really been thinking about the earth and the sun and other bodies in our solar system whether or not they could be uh actually felt do you have any thoughts on that yeah you know everything that we are looking at from our own individual personal perspective is filtered through our sense of judgment that we were conditioned into. Um, so trying to find out what's good and what's bad is, is can be exhausting. <laughs> Even trying to figure out who are the good guys, who are the bad guys, you know, are Republicans and Democrats, you know, I mean, this, it's just divisiveness is trying to figure out who who's got the white hat, who's got the black hat. Um, but if you can stay centered, um, I, I think you have a much better chance of finding peace. Uh, even even more so than if you go off into the highest realms, because by my experience, and I'm totally open for conversation about this, by my experience, if I go way into elation, almost, you know, just I'm going to disappear with joy or whatever, within time, over time, there seems to be a pushback. And then I, you know, I drop, you know, and then you go the other direction. So for me, it seems to work like that, that for every really high moment, I end up with a very dark moment. I mean, it's just so, <laughs> it's like, okay, we're just going to stay in the middle here and see what happens. <laughs> it's kind of like a wagon wheel. If you take, you look at a wagon wheel, right, right in the center hub, even if the wheel is spinning, right in the very, very, very minute center, there's really not much going on. But if you're a piece of bubblegum stuck on the outside of the wheel and just going up and down and up and down, you know, you're, you're kind of really going for a dramatic ride. And um, meditation is the practice of coming more and more into the center. That's how I like to, to see it. Um, I don't know if they still have on the playgrounds these uh, merry-go-rounds that, you know, all the kids used to jump on and spin and everybody would hang on for their life. <laughs> I don't think they have them anymore because of the liability. But uh, but the game was everybody had to try to get to the center, you know, to, to be able to hang on comfortably. Because <laughs> if you get to the outside, you get thrown off by the, the, the uh, centrifugal force, right? 
so uh, so my my suggestion is stay centered say stay, stay balanced right in the middle whatever that means in your in your moment that and is... that's that's also called dharma by the way i believe which is different from karma dharma is uh, similar to that concept of centered balance yeah yes and and from that place from that centered balanced quiet place every moment has its perfect thing that you are moving into um, so everything ends up working out in perfect harmony with all the forces of the universe um, but if you're on the on the merry-go-round and you're kind of getting thrown around uh, life becomes very confusing very chaotic very quickly hmm interesting it reminds me of uh dance and and conscious dance practice uh because there's um i definitely enjoy in the dance world the variation of high speed high energy to incredibly slow to then all the way to meditation and being completely still um although i feel like that's a that's kind of like a different dimension than the elation uh joy energy versus because i don't feel like being still it's like um but i found your description of that fascinating it's like it's almost almost like you were saying you could if you wanted experience incredible joy and elation you just know the universe always almost like pays up makes you pay a price because it just it has to swing like a pendulum in some way yeah, I can't, by my experience, that's what it does. <laughs> you know, I, I haven't compared this with everybody, but it seems to do that. You know, for every high, there's a low. Um, so yeah, staying right in the middle happily. You know, you find your comfort zone, and uh, and just work from there. Um, it's almost like it's, I'm imagining like an artist who's like, I only paint with bright yellow and white for joy <laughs> the only <laughs> color i paint with right. and it's like yeah. they have this like they have all this art it's beautiful white and yellow and the universe is saying there's only one thing that can happen here it's gonna get dark and dirty it's and gonna dark. get dark yeah we need some <laughs> shadow there yeah isn't that true it's a great analogy yeah <laughs> yeah you can have the whitest yellowest piece of art that's ever been created just guarantee eventually the universe will show you another color <laughs> exactly and you know that's very buddhist i mean that's called the middle way that's the middle way you find you know you, you find that place that's just right it's almost like uh you know trying to sing a song right each note that you're singing you're wanting to find that the right note you know you're not wanting to sing flat or sharp so that you can sing a beautiful song you want to you know hit the right notes <laughs> not too not too left and not too right um and and your whole life is like that your whole life is like a song and you just have to know what's the right note at any given moment yeah it's uh it's, it's really reminding me of my life as a painter um if i can like continue with the painting because i'm not a great singer so i, I don't have a good you we'll know, stick with the art yeah. technology. Yeah, go ahead. But like in my, you know, one thing I learned in high school uh, in my AP when I got way into art was some artists are tortured by perfectionism. They're trying to make the perfect painting all the time and it literally upsets them and stresses them out. Even if occasionally they come close to what they want, they are never really satisfied. And so it's like this painful experience to watch. And I found that I very eventually I settled into you know whatever ends up on that canvas is perfect <laughs> and once you do that and you stop caring about not only your own judgment of it but everyone else is completely it's suddenly a, a much more you know it's just like instead of going for an all white all yellow perfect beautiful canvas you just say you know whatever's on there is perfect even if the universe throws mud on it it's perfect it just makes it way more fun and yeah fast and enjoyable it reminds me of the artist um is it pollock is that his name the yeah guy that absolutely. just sprays paint all over the place and you know makes millions with that um yeah it's it's can you see the beauty in everything a lot of people can't do that that's that's a really good point you're bringing up it's mm. powerful 
Yeah, that's that's interesting. Yeah, so... I'm definitely not that way in life, though. I definitely am like, oh, this earth could be governed better. But, you know, it's it's been very weird having the the alien stuff that I know you and I have talked about a lot. And, um, and you were, we should also tell anyone who's listening to this, that you were a guest twice or a co-host on the Beyond Humanity podcast. So there's more, uh, there's other discussions if people are just like enthralled by our discussion of meditation and aliens. Yeah, and I and like I said, I do have a, a YouTube channel and a website, so um, those are discussions there too. They're fun. Oh yeah, and yeah. what tell tell people what you what is your intention with those those uh, mediums? What are you sharing on a regular basis? Well, basically, my whole thing is to help people use these tools to find their own path. You know, I, I do believe that everyone has their own unique path. We can't try to be somebody else. It will never work. We have to be our own. You could say we are a piece of the puzzle and we can't try to be a different piece of the puzzle. We are what we are and we are needed. We are required to fill in the whole picture. Um, and the only way to really feel your um, purpose is through meditation and that's that's i'm going to admit that is totally my personal uh opinion but i i truly believe that it's only through the quiet mind and the mindful present moment that we're going to know exactly what we're supposed to be doing so that's why i'm a life coach i do that <laughs> i have <laughs> people do that use that yeah so well it's uh you you have um uh, you've been my life coach uh, many times over the years and it's been incredibly helpful so it's it's really um i feel like i've been planning on doing uh something like this where we could share your wisdom um with an audience and uh create some some ways for people to just sort of like sink in and uh, learn um, and explore the meaning of the universe uh, the way I have been able to with you over the years. Um, so I think this is a really amazing uh, gift. I'm so happy we're recording this. I'm going to share this uh, in different ways online. I'm going to, we're going to, so those of you that can see the, um, the screen if you're watching the video version of this you're seeing a 3d world that's part of a uh, uh, this world i've created um called hive one where people can share ideas and explore the truth in a very safe environment and so this is going to be this is going to be one of the first um sort of audio ex uh 3d experiences that i make a permanent feature on hive one and you know and if we do another recording we'll make another little room that people can go into and just each show will be like a almost like a living sculpture garden that you can be in and then and hopefully in the future there'll be some people will join us and you can uh just like you do i know you do on a regular basis you do guided meditations for people in different formats so hopefully this can be another format where you can share that Oh, this is great, Matt. Yeah, and I so appreciate the the platform and uh, and just everything. Having gotten to know you over the years, everything you do is just fascinating. And you know, you've taught me probably more than I've taught you. So thank you. <laughs> well, that is, you know, I think that's what life is about. It's and I why I create these uh, the things I do online is to try to figure out how to create environments where people can come in and share the best of their themselves in a safe way because there's seems there's so much instinct in the world to make it's almost like what you said about um about like if you go super happy it's going to come super dark it's like the minute you make an environment that is super happy and beautiful forces in the inner uh world come in to try to throw toxic energy on it it's like this weird don't know quite what is at work there yeah, you know, and then there's the whole subject of karma. So it goes way down all kinds of rabbit holes. Um, you know, and I and I, you know, it's possible that somebody could live their whole life just in a in a state of 
you know, um, comfort and happiness. I don't know. I mean, maybe they're out there somewhere. I have never met them and I'm only really re talking about my life and I'd be curious to know if it's true with everybody that every time you have a real good up, you know, it's just a matter of time, sometimes a day, sometimes years, but eventually it's going to go down. That's my experience. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, excellent. I think, uh, what do you think? We wrap up there yeah. for this weekend. Um, yeah. And uh, I, I'm hoping we do this again either maybe weekly or bi-weekly if you're uh if you're interested sounds good sounds like fun awesome okay so i'll i'll thank our audience and i'm gonna stop the recording and so that we will be we will be done thank you for listening all right thanks matt thank you